It's a long, cold winter in a Canadian school. The sunlight reaches us obliquely, if at all, as the landscape turns to grayscale, and we all huddle inside for the duration. Disconnected from nature, we sit down to study, often before our screens, for hours and hours and hours, focused inward, disconnected from our bodies, isolated from each other except for the false LED warmth of digital media. Our physical and mental health degenerates. Even during the short spring and fall seasons, when life outside is more possible, we are faced with a bland and uninspiring schoolyard, a swath of flat, often muddy green that exists between the cement of the school and the cement of the sidewalk, a leftover aesthetic of some bygone era when flat, grassy areas were in, really in, uninspiring and unnatural. These lawns had their purpose, we suppose, but it's time for an intervention. We need an outdoor space that is so much more. Our physical and mental health depend upon it. It's time to unplug and come alive outside in Canada. The challenge. Our goal is to create a four season landscape design that will service both the Ursula Franklin Academy community, the Blue Rust Village community, as well as the often invisible other components of the ecological web in which we live, the local flora and fauna. Our school is a public school with citywide intake. 500 students from all over Toronto attend Ursula Franklin Academy. At UFA, we value diversity. Our landscape design will need to reflect the people and wild animals that are part of our community, whether it be an UFA student, a child at Creative Corners Nursery, or the neighbors that walk their dog on the weekend. We want a space that engages all our senses and promotes a conscious awareness of the environment around us. We want UFA students and teachers to take the learning that is going on inside, outside. Learning with all of our senses, awakening our minds and bodies. The process. Students from a design and philosophy course at Ursula Franklin Academy connected with Ryerson University landscape design students and UFA parent Haig Safarian of Safarian Design. Together we solicited input from all parts of our community. Students, teachers, the administration, parents, neighbors, and creative corners, the on-site nursery. We conducted surveys, held meetings, created wish lists, and asked everyone to let their imagination run wild. Literally. If I could have one thing changed about the school, it would be properly paved walkways. It would have to be brick houses. Bike racks. Ivy. Outdoor classroom. An ivy wall. Bike racks. Gazebo. Outdoor classroom. Sculpture garden. Flowers. Outdoor classroom. Bee garden. Bike racks. Bike racks. We determined that there were some key features that came up repeatedly. An outdoor classroom. Bike racks. A teaching and meditation garden. More seating. A natural place to play and learn. With all of this input and inspiring direction from the Come Alive Outside Design Challenge, we set to work. First in teams, and now as a whole group, creating handmade drawings of what our ideal schoolyard design would look like, writing theses about our concepts, researching costs, and writing budgets. We learned how to use SketchUp as a medium to convey our ideas and gave presentations to each other, to the school community and parents. We got valuable guidance along the way from our teacher, Ryerson University students and Haig Safarian. The Ryerson University landscape and design students were very generous in sharing their time and expertise in the development of our plan. Sometimes they were tough, telling us straight up what wasn't working. They directed us in terms of general layout and design, encouraging us to create a greater sense of unity to our initial plans. We also got detailed information on what kinds of plants to consider given our climate and goal of increasing habitat for animals. Our students said that we needed to wow our client. We went back to the drawing board with that in mind. So here we go. We believe our final design accomplishes our goals with a multitude of installments that cater to the needs of our community within a budget of $5,000 plus $2,000 in fundraising using a three-phase installation. Our entire project will be hand-built using upcycled, salvaged, and sustainable products. This reflects our desire to be as connected to the process as possible. We will use donated, local sourced and indigenous species to have a light carbon footprint, which reflects our commitment as a platinum status eco-school. To create a sense of unity, the various elements of our overall plan incorporate curves and spirals inspired by the Fibonacci sequence or the golden mean. The essential outdoor classroom, which doubles as a much needed meeting place for students and neighborhood guests outside of class time, will nestle into the flow of the existing slope using a Greek theater design method. Permacon blocks will render this space usable all year long. The outdoor classroom is an extraordinary resource. It can be a learning center, a project-based station, and an area for reflection and observation. Children can reinforce, apply, and enrich their learning skills in an outdoor classroom. In other words, an outdoor classroom is a useful extension of the learning done indoors. 
It provides for opportunities to interpret, predict, and analyze information in meaningful contexts. Our wander and wonder garden along the side yard will be created using salvaged wood stumps and logs which will be placed into curved and spiral pathways. The stumps act as a fun area for nursery children to jump around, a relaxation spot for students to gather, and serve as a second outdoor learning space. The wooden texture will appeal to children and adults alike. Principal's Row is where trees will be planted in honor of every principal at UFA. Each tree will be planted with a plaque that holds a message from the principal for future UFA students. As the trees grow and strengthen over the years, so will our community. Bike racks will be added to the top of the yard on flat areas near the school. Additional bike racks encourage students to use sustainable ways of getting to school by making biking easy and safe. This will encourage more students to cycle to school, improving a physical health in the short term and encouraging lifelong healthy living practices. We believe that sustaining and fostering indigenous wildlife in our schoolyard is a necessity. Diverse natural systems are healthy, self-sustaining ecosystems in which all living things play a part. We rely on this interplay between all living things to give us clean air, fresh drinking water and healthy soils in which plants can grow. Urban development interferes with this natural balance and may destroy the habitat of many of the organisms in the web of life. We incorporated wildlife habitats into our design by including indigenous plants throughout the schoolyard hoping to attract a variety of animals. For example, milkweed to attract butterflies, ivy as food and shelter for birds, as well as other species. Oak trees will produce acorns for squirrels and other animals. Birdhouses will also be placed around the yard to increase the habitat possibilities and create a backdrop of song to the general shouts of children at play outdoors. In addition to appealing to our five senses, there will be a peace garden, a much needed quiet space that will appeal to our sixth sense, if you will, that of our mind. The stress of students today is great and anxiety in teens is at an epidemic level. Tucked away into a quiet corner of our schoolyard, this garden, centered around a single tree, aromatic herbs and a gentle wind chime, will contribute to the mental health and well-being of our students and those of our greater community. This garden will be dedicated to our namesake, Ursula Franklin, a renowned scientist and pacifist. An overall emphasis will be placed on using plants that will create a four-season Canadian landscape. Through the use of rocks, evergreens and other plants that maintain foliage throughout the winter or that have an interesting form once the leaves fall off, our garden will sustain a visual appeal regardless of the season. This will allow students in subjects from visual arts to biology to sketch, photograph and examine nature all year long. The various scents of plants as they bloom on the branch to leaves as they decay on the ground will fill the air. In addition, being indigenous, these species will require less human intervention to thrive. When devising a plan of action for our landscape design, we always had a cost-effective budget in mind. Having a low budget is necessary when designing. Usually the project will cost more than your estimate and it forces you to find a creative ways to design installations. One example of our cost-effective budget is the use of recycled canoe instead of flower pots. So not only did we cut down on our costs, but we also gave purpose to an item that would otherwise be garbage. Being able to hand build a landscaping project is extremely beneficial to us. It gets the community involved and really gives the feeling that everyone pitched in to make this transformation. Additionally, it helps reduce costs and gives the designers more freedom when making changes during building. When developing a plan, we made sure that every object could be built and placed without the assistance of machinery. Should we win the Come Alive Canada contest, we will be able to make our dreams a reality. We plan to begin construction in May and every student in the school, along with many parents, teachers and neighbours, will be putting foot to shovel and hand to dirt to build our landscape design. We can truly unplug and come alive outside. Thank you Ryerson Landscape and design students, Safarian Design, Come Alive Outside, and our teacher Yolanda for all your support throughout this design process.